Now I know that everybody thinks that living in Tampa Bay is all sunshine, flip-flops, and white sandy beaches. But in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the most overrated city in Tampa Bay, in my humble opinion. All right, now I'm sure many of you are gonna be surprised at the city I have chosen to be the most overrated here in Tampa Bay, but if you're local or even not local and you've been to the area before that we're talking about today, let us know down in the chat below. I'll tell you what, people who watch this channel get a tremendous amount of value on your shares. You know, those contributions you make down there, people read those comments, y'all. So make sure if you, you know, if you agree or disagree, put it down below. We'd love to know. And hey, if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. And we also make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. So while you're down there, don't hesitate to subscribe and click that little button. That way you can be notified every time we make new videos like this and you don't have to go chasing them down. All right, now I realize what I'm about to say may be a little bit controversial. And I just wanna preface this by saying this is just one man's opinion. You don't have to agree with me. You can totally agree with me. Whatever it is, that is fine. But I wanna share this with you because after living here for four years, I gotta tell you, we've experienced a lot. We've seen a lot of things that we absolutely love and we see some things that we don't necessarily like. And I think videos like this are extremely important if you're considering relocating or investing in the area because you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> and when we made the move, you know, we thought that it was gonna be all sunshine, you know, lollipops and rainbows, but that ain't the truth. Wait a minute, this isn't my world. Disappoint! So today we really want to get into some of this, but I do want to talk about some of the things that are great. And oh, by the way, I know you're waiting on the city. Drum roll, please. The city we're talking about today is Clearwater, Florida. All right, now let's start out by talking about the good things that Clearwater is known for, because to be quite honest, there are so many pros that, you know, talking about just the cons is unfair and it's just not the reality. So I want to share these things with you. You may or may not know these things already, but I'm going to bring them to you. That way we can just put things in perspective, okay? Clearwater Beach has been recognized as one of the best beaches in the United States multiple times. It showed up on Trip Advisor's list. As a matter of fact, it's on that list again. It's in the top 25. It's been recognized as the number one. That was in 2019. And I think it's been on there more than once. Don't quote me on that. But right? Why is this beach so loved? Well, there is so much to do here. I mean, this beach is three miles long of white sandy beaches. It's about three blocks wide. You know, there are so many activities and things to do. Kayaking, paddle boarding, jet ski rentals, you know, parasailing. Uh, you can go on a pirate cruise out there. You can take a dinner cruise. You can, you know, uh, charter a boat to go fishing. And the Gulf Coast sunsets are absolutely incredible. So it's really hard to dog out a city that absolutely has great things about it, right? Because guess what, y'all? There aren't many cities in the United States that do, right? And that's not the only thing that Clearwater has to offer. I mean, obviously you got Pier 60 out there on the beach. The beach is just absolutely stunning. You've got bars and restaurants and boutiques and shopping and all the trappings you could ever wish for when you're on Clearwater Beach in particular, right? And Clearwater has some of the best shopping in all of Pinellas County as well. You've got uh, Clearwater Mall. You've got Countryside Mall. It's got the only Costco in the entire county, which is a huge plus. We shop there, y'all. So just for in the interest of transparency, they've got a BJ's, they've got um, a, a Sam's Club, they've got Walmart's, of course, Whole Foods. I mean, the Philadelphia Phillies play spring training here. I mean, trust me, there is a lot to love here. The parks, it's got great parks, including Caladesi Park, which is a state park. Absolutely stunning. The only way we can get there is by boat. You can take your dogs over there and you can camp overnight, which is really cool if you've never done that before. It's awesome. But great public parks, places where you can take your dogs, places where you can run, places where you can walk. And I just think that overall Clearwater has a ton to love about it, but there are some things that aren't perfect. And that is why I wanted to get into this video today, because for all the love that Clearwater gets, right? Six and a half million overnight visitors a year. It brings $10 billion to the local economy. Um, you've got 102,000 people that are relatively employed in the greater Tampa Bay area because of tourism. All of these things are wonderful. 
However, I want to get into some of the realities if you're considering living here or if you're considering investing in real estate here in the area as well. All right, let's start with the beaches because that is obviously why Clearwater Beach is recognized and so many people flock to the area and deservedly so. Clearwater Beach is absolutely stunning. However, did you know that Tampa Bay has over 700 miles of coastline? We have 35 miles of white sandy beaches here in Pinellas County that are south of Clearwater Beach, y'all. There are five other public beach accesses outside of Clearwater Beach. You've got Indian Rocks Beach, which is my home beach, absolutely beautiful. You've got Indian Shores, the Tiki Gardens over there. The wife loves to take the kids down there. The whole homeschool co-op shows up down there. You've got Reddington Shores. You've got Madeira Beach, and you've also got St. Pete Beach. I mean, there is a ton. All of these places have... Uh, showers, they have bathrooms, they are clean, and there's plenty of parking in these areas too. So absolutely beautiful. And the beaches are all white, sandy, just absolutely incredible. You'll love those beaches too. There are also four county beach parks. You've got Fort DeSoto, Sand Key, Egmont, which is over in Hillsboro, and Fred Howard Park. Two state parks, including Honeymoon Island up in Dunedin and Caladesi Island, which we discussed too. And trust me, y'all, you have to check that out. The second reason why I think Clearwater is overrated is because of the traffic. And if you've been watching my channel for any time at all, you know I talk about the good, bad, the ugly, and we've been talking a lot about traffic because Tampa has just not been designed to deal with the amount of people who continue to move here on a regular basis. We're about 3.2 million residents, and you know I'm not a civil engineer, but based upon my personal driving and anecdotal evidence, like it looks like this city was built for about a million and a half, maybe a million people, because it just feels like it's getting really, really hard to navigate. Now, when we talk about Clearwater specifically, you know Clearwater has 6.5 million overnight visitors annually. That is going to put a real pinch on any community. So this isn't the beat up on Clearwater. Part of that blessing of having all of these people come because you have a beautiful place also comes at a price. And that price is you're going to share the road, especially during times like spring break, and in the winter, when the snowbirds fly south for the year, uh, traffic can kind of get a little bit difficult. Right now, it's peak spring break season, and I'm telling you, it takes me an additional 15 minutes basically to go anywhere if I have to travel north of my home, and I have to take that into account. So for locals, it definitely can be a challenge. If you're coming down on vacation or if you're considering purchasing a home down here, just keep in mind, when you come down here and you're, you're like, hey, I want to go to Clearwater Beach during spring break, it can take as much as an hour to go over the Clearwater Causeway, which is only about two miles long, y'all. So keep that in perspective when you come down because traffic is a bear. All right, another reason to talk about here is Clearwater's crime rate. And I gotta be honest with you, you know, Clearwater does not have the best crime rate in the country. Um, as a matter of fact, it has a higher than average crime rate um, amongst similar cities in the United States. But there is one caveat, and I wanna make sure that I give credit where credit is due. Although with 22 crimes for every 1,000 residents, it's not amongst the highest in the country. So keep that in perspective. When you go check out these crime maps, and I'll even make sure I include the link uh, below to Neighborhood Scout, which is a site I love to use, you'll find that a majority of these types of crimes happen they're like petty theft, things like that. Don't take my word for it. Go check it out. But you can see what type of crime it is. And with 6.5 million visitors annually, obviously, you know, Clearwater becomes an easy target. I don't know about you, but I have been to the beach before where I've taken all of my personal items and effects. I've stuck them in a bag or just set them on the beach and I've walked away. And guys, I got to be honest, while I trust my fellow citizen, I also recognize that if that goes away, that's on me. And a lot of that happens. People come, they rent cars, they leave their stuff in the car, and it becomes easy target. And I'm not making excuses for anyone. We just all have to deal in reality. If you're coming here, lock up your stuff, y'all. Keep your phone and your wallet back at the beach condo. That way these things aren't happening. So I just wanted to share that with you because I think it is important to note while crime is higher, there is obvious reasons for it. Another reason why I think that Clearwater is overrated is because of the public schools. Now, I got to be honest with y'all. We've talked about this before. Florida is not known for its schools. I mean, go to TikTok, go to Instagram, go do your Google searches. It's pretty obvious right away that Florida's public schools don't have the highest rating when it comes to the United States. This isn't Juan's opinion. These are facts also. That link will be down below. <laughs> uh, public school review, I'll share that with you guys. That way you can go check out and do your homework. That's what I always tell everybody when they're considering making a move or investing in the area. Now, investors might be asking yourself, well, I'm investing. Why are schools important? Well, 
I just got to share with you guys, right? If you've done any real homework in real estate, you recognize that where school systems are good, real estate values tend to hold up extremely well. And when school systems are down or below average, that's when things tend to get a little bit bumpy. Now, we have the blessing here. Clearwater is in, you know, greater Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has just made Times list of the best places in the world. That's incredible. I mean, what a huge win for Tampa. Um, we Everybody and their brother seems like they're moving here. It's not that many, but it feels that way. And I mean, Florida is still on fire with people coming and relocating because they get to. And overall, this has contributed to making our community a better place, not a worse place. So what I think you're gonna see is these schools continue to improve. However, we gotta deal with reality. Now, according to Public School Review, Clearwater had an average ranking of five out of 10, which would put it in the bottom 50% of Florida's public schools. Y'all, that's not my opinion. Of course, I put the link down below. Make sure you check that out. And listen, for all of the things that makes Clearwater bumpy or may not make it perfect, we started with one heck of a list, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. Now, with all that being said, I think that Clearwater is actually just a wonderful place to live. Listen, for, for the cons that, that it definitely has to deal with, I think the pros that you have available to you when it comes to quality of living outweigh that handily. There are some things that this city is absolutely working on and needs to continue to work on. What I would encourage you to do if you're considering relocating here or investing in the area, do your homework. I put those links down below so you can check that out. If you'd like to have a deeper discussion about this, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below, including a link to my calendar where I'd be happy to jump on a Zoom call with you, talk about your housing goals, your investment goals, whatever it is, just know when it comes to making that move to the Tampa Bay area, me and my team here have got your back. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.